I've recently made a video about setting up Nginx as a reverse proxy directly on Linux, but what if there was a nice and beautiful web UI that you can use to manage your entire Nginx reverse proxy, edit multiple sites, obtain trusted SSL certificates and that is running in a Docker container? Well, that would be awesome, right? Hi everybody, my name is Christian and I make great tutorials and content for IT professionals. I also stream every Wednesday and Thursday on Twitch, so if you have any questions or you just want to continue the discussion or just hang out and chill, just jump into my live streams, it's always a lot of fun. So in this video I will show you a very nice open source project that is called the Nginx Proxy Manager. And this is basically an Nginx installation with a beautiful web UI that you can use to easily configure this as a reverse proxy. You can also use use this application to obtain trusted SSL certificates and it's running in a Docker container. So this can be easily deployed with Docker or Docker Compose or any other container management tool. In this tutorial I will show you how to easily use Docker Compose to deploy this application and I'm also going to expose an unsecured web application in this tutorial. So this is a perfect solution for your home lab if you want to expose web applications securely or in small server environments as well. In this tutorial I'm using an Ubuntu server that has already Docker and Docker Compose installed. If you don't know how to do that, just check out my other two videos about Docker and Docker Compose. There I will teach you all the fundamentals and basics about containerization, how to install that on a server and how to use that. And as always, you don't need to remember any commands, just have a look at the video description below to my written blog article. There you will find a full guide that is written on my website and you can just copy and paste any commands or template I'm going to use in this tutorial. Okay, so let's start to deploy Nginx Proxy Manager. So I've prepared an Ubuntu 20.04 LTS server that has already Docker and Docker Compose installed. So let's first create a new directory in the OPT path that is called Nginx Proxy Manager and CD into this folder. So now we need to create a new docker-compose.yaml file and I've already prepared one on my Visual Studio code. I've basically just copied this from the official documentation of Nginx Proxy Manager on GitHub, but let me also explain some of the details here in this file. So we will first start with the version 3 and add two services here. So the first service is called app and this is basically running the main Nginx Proxy Manager image that is maintained by JC21. So that also exposes three ports here, the port 80, 81 and 443. So these two ports here are for the HTTP and HTTPS services that are running on our Nginx proxy manager and the port 81 is for our web interface. Well you probably can argue if port 81 is the best choice for a web UI but yeah you probably could also change this to a different port if you want to. So now we need to specify the MySQL database environment variables. So we need a MySQL host that is called DB. So that should be the same name as our second service here. Don't change the port number, but you can use something different for user, password and database name, for example. And we will need two persistent volumes. The first is a data folder and the second is the let's encrypt that stores all the SSL certificates in there. And then we have a second service that is called DB and that is also using a maintained image from JC21 that is using a MariaDB image. And you should also change the environment variables to set the root password, database, user and password to something more secure. <laughs> and then you also need to add a persistent volume that is located in our data directory with MySQL and that stores the entire database persistently. So let's save this file to our remote server that is called docker-compose.yaml and if we execute an ls in this directory now we should see the file is in here. So let's start the nginx proxy manager stack by executing the docker-compose up with a dash d parameter that will automatically start all those services in the background. And if your services are started you can just open the web interface on port 81. So now you need to enter an email address and a password and the default email address is admin at example.com and the password is change me. So click on sign in and then you first need to change the user. So change that to any email address you have. So for example, I want to use Christian at the digital life.com. Click on save. And now you need to set a secure password. So enter change me and choose any secured password you want to use. And that's it. That's pretty simple, right? 
So now we can click on the dashboard to see what we can do with this amazing software. And you can see you can add many different things here. For example, you can add a new proxy host. So when you want to expose any secured web application, but you also have a redirection host where you can, for example, add other forward domains and you can also add streams. So if you just want to do a simple NAT forwarding or something like this here, you can also edit access lists if you want to prevent anyone from accessing your web services. And if you want to use black or white lists for any specific IP addresses, multiple client rules, usernames and password for access control. You can also obtain trusted SSL certificates. We will do that later. And of course, manage different users, have an audit log, some global settings and so on. Let me also show you how to easily obtain any trusted SSL certificates with Nginx Proxy Manager. So before we can do that, I will need to create a new subdomain on my DNS server that will point to the public IP address to my cloud server. So I'm going to use the research.thedigitallife.com domain and I'm going to create this on my DNS provider. So I'm using DigitalOcean as my DNS and cloud provider because you can easily manage your DNS server completely for free. So this video is not sponsored by DigitalOcean, but if you want to try out this, you will find a referral link in the video description below. There you will get $100 for 60 days if you want to try out DigitalOcean. I think it's a great service. And it also helps my channel if you try out this. So on my DNS server, I will just add a new host name that is called research.thedigitallife.com and this will point to the public IP address of this server. In DigitalOcean, this can be easily selected here and then just create a new record. So now this DNS name should point to this public IP address here and we can just use that to obtain our SSL certificate. So if you want to obtain a trusted SSL certificate, just click on add SSL certificate and enter the domain name. So in my example, this is research.thedigitallife.com and I will also agree to the Let's Encrypt Terms of Service. So by the way, I will make a separate video on wildcard certificates and how they usually work in general with ThirdBot and also with Nginx Proxy Manager. So if you are interested in this, just subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to get a notification once this video comes online. Okay, so click on save and this will now take a few minutes to obtain the SSL certificate. And if everything was successful, you should see your certificate here in this list here. So we can now use that to expose any host services here. Let's also expose a simple web application. So I want to use Nextcloud as an example, which by the way is a nice software to store all your data in a private cloud environment This is entirely hosted on your own servers. But note, don't use this for a production environment because this is just a simple example deployment of Nextcloud. If you really want to do that, you would typically need to add a persistent volume and store this in a Docker Compose folder or something. So now I want to run the Nextcloud Docker container that will easily simulate a simple web application. So now this is very important to understand how networks work in Docker because Docker networks are isolated from each other. You need to make sure that the app you want to expose is connected to the Nginx proxy manager network. So when I execute Docker network list, you can see all the different networks that are existing here. And by default, when you don't specify a network in the Docker Compose file, Docker Compose will automatically create a new network that is called like the project with an underscore default that is a bridge interface. So we need to connect our Nginx cloud container and all containers we want to expose with the Nginx proxy manager to this network here. So I'm using a simple command to run a Nextcloud container. Don't use this in production environment because I'm not adding a persistent storage. So we will connect this Docker container to the Nginx proxy manager underscore default network. This is very important and we also want to name it to Nextcloud. So this command is also very important because otherwise the Nginx reverse proxy cannot use this as a DNS name to connect to this service here. And we will also use Nextcloud as our Docker image. And of course, I also want to run this in the background here. So add a dash D parameter as well. So when we now execute a docker ps command, we should see the additional nextcloud docker container that is attached to the nginx proxy manager network. And note this doesn't expose any ports because I don't want anyone to access this container directly, but instead we will use nginx proxy manager to expose this container here. So let's go back to our nginx proxy manager here and add a new proxy host. So now we need to enter our domain name that should be the same like in our SSL certificate, otherwise we will get a certificate error. So let's use the research.thedigitallife.com 
And now we need to select the correct scheme. So note it is very important to use the correct scheme. So for example, for any unsecured web application that is not running on HTTPS protocol, use HTTP. And for any web application that is using a self-signed certificate with HTTPS, choose this one here. So for example, Nextcloud is using HTTP. And we will now need to enter the forward host name or IP address. So because we have connected this Docker container to the same network like the Nginx Proxy Manager and we have given this a service name, we can easily just refer to the Nextcloud service. So note you can never use the local host name or the local host IP address here because this would just refer to the Docker container's internal IP address and not to the host operating system address. So you will definitely need to enter an IP address here or a service name of a container that is attached to the same Docker network. Also add the forward port, that is port AD by default. And I also want to add the block common exploits. So we will add some protection to our server that is blocking some common malicious exploits on our website here. And you can also use custom locations that are pretty cool because you extend the path and you can add specific locations for different paths and so forth. But for this example we don't need this. No, we will need to add the SSL certificate. So we will select our research.thedigitallife.com let's encrypt certificate. And of course we want to force SSL, we will add HTTP2 support and HSTS enabled. We could also add some custom Nginx configuration, for example, if you want to change some header uh, attributes here or so on. But uh, for this example we can just click on save here. And if you click on this link here, you should see the welcome page of Nextcloud or your web application that you have exposed on your Nginx proxy manager. And if you've done everything right, it should just work fine. And if you still can't get it to work, just join our Discord community and just ask any questions. So a quick shout out to everybody on my Discord community, you're awesome. <laughs> And if this video was helpful to you guys, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more tutorials and content for IT professionals. So before I go, I want to give a quick shout out to all my supporters on Patreon, especially Mason, who is the producer of this show. And if you want to support my mission to help as many people as possible to jump in the field of IT and become real IT professionals, just support me on Patreon. So thanks everybody for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take care of yourself and I see you soon.